Welcome to the University of Manchester's Economist Talking About series. In this episode, we will be interviewing Dr. Sofia Iquidero Sanchez, a senior lecturer in economics at the University of Manchester. To begin, could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself and the work that you do? Yes, yeah, so um, my name is Sofia, and as you very well mentioned, I am a senior lecturer in economics. Uh, I am, um, well, uh, I, I, my main area in teaching and research is uh, microeconomics and more towards applied economics and uh, cultural economics. And um, uh, yeah, I've been uh, uh, I've been in the UK for, for around twelve years. Uh, somehow I ended up here. <laughs> uh, did my uh, degree. Uh, so my background comes from Spain, and. Um, and yes, now half of my family is English now, so. <laughs> Perfect. And um, having studied in both Spain and the UK, what would you say are like the main academic differences between the two? Um, that's, um, you know, I did my degree in Spain and a master's. Uh, that's some time ago. And I've not come, not that long ago, but <laughs> some time ago. And uh, I, I know I know the system has changed there. And uh, to be honest, I've never taught in Spain. So I've always taught in the UK because I did my PhD here at Lancaster University. So, but uh, during my degree, I went one year, uh, I did Erasmus, which was the uh, international exchange program with the European Union at the University of Bristol. And I can tell you by then that would be 2009, by then, uh, what I, the, the main differences that uh, struck to mind suddenly uh, were um, it's more um, here is more of a, like an apply system. You have more like pushwork, more so uh, maybe less uh, theoretical uh, packaging the, the lectures, you know, tutorials. Like you have more apply. Um, there is more intensive in terms of uh, how many lectures, uh, teaching hours uh, uh, you have, and then maybe less coursework at home. Um, and they also, uh, there was more, uh, the, the final exams had more weight that maybe uh, they had here. So basically, this, the feeling I had, then it was really difficult to pass, okay? Here is uh, difficult to get a high mark, but maybe not that much to pass. Saying that, in over these like 13, 14 years, the system could have changed in Spain. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to say that this is how it works here. Uh, but actually, the two systems I thought they were quite different with the fact that you get the same degree. <laughs> yeah. Right. And what were your main motivations to pursuing a PhD, and how were you able to choose a specialization? So during my Erasmus year at the University of Bristol, uh, well, you know, I'll start telling to you why I studied economics in the first place. So my two parents studied economics. And I really like the fact always since I was a little girl that they could go to uh, any table or conversation and they could talk almost about anything because economics is such a broad topic, so related to your daily life. Um, I didn't have very clear what to study. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do economics. And then when I went to Bristol, I had a couple of very inspirational inspirational uh, teachers, lecturers, actually. And, and suddenly there, I realized I, I really loved the, the area of economics. I know it took me three years, <laughs> but, you know, I thought that. Uh, so I then I wanted to continue my studies in postgraduate with a master's and a potentially with a PhD. So I would say what inspired me to study a PhD was inspirational lecturing, probably. And then um, after my year in Bristol, I did want to come back to the UK to continue my studies here. So I applied for a PhD here. I knew I wanted to do it in applied industrial organization or something uh, related. How I ended up working with the cultural industries, I have to say that's more down to my um, amazing supervisors that I had at Lancaster University. So when my application came through, they contacted me. Uh, one of my supervisors had uh, this idea to work with the film industry and I just, I loved it. And then I 
end up working in that area. So it's been like a kind of uh, coincidental path that uh, I may have with. <laughs> It's very interesting. And um, I also understand that you have your own Instagram page that kind of showcases economics in the real world. So what were your main motivations be behind starting this? And how do you think it influences your teaching? So I, okay, so I do think, um, although I, you know, when we do research, we tend to specialize a lot in one area. But I do think teaching and research, uh, it's, um, well, relates to each other quite a lot. First, teaching helps you to explain uh, complex or concepts in a more simpler way, you know, so make it, it to understand uh, for a broad range of audience. And then uh, and at the same time, uh, research helps you to keep updated with your teaching and like have it there for like real world examples. As a microeconomics teacher, uh, one of the lecturers, one of the things that I realized from the very early beginning is like, you know, in my mind, I know that microeconomics relates a lot to like the small things in your daily life. However, this is very difficult to, for the students to see straight away, especially when you start seeing the first theories. It's like, how, how is this relevant at all, you know? And um, for that message to come across, I thought that research-led teaching, obviously research-led teaching uh, for uh, every stage of the undergraduate will be different and uh, uh, helps a lot because it helps them to see uh, the different examples. And this is also the idea that I had behind the Instagram account that I opened with uh, Will at Lancaster University. Because I thought, well, there are so many situations in my family life, you know, or just in my general life or, or the student life, which relates to microeconomic concepts and macroeconomic concepts, because uh, that they, we could be talking about. So uh, we decided to open that, not just for students, but also trying to outreach, because I think like economics is such an important uh, topic to understand the depth okay, of it uh, for that general population not just the students so that's the idea behind and it's in the very early stages okay so we just started but uh, yeah hopefully it could be an idea like people like so. <laughs> thank you and just to kind of round up the interview do you have any advice for students that are at university now about how to make the most out of their time at university yeah that's um that's a good question <laughs> um well, actually, now that we're coming back from um, the COVID pandemic, in which everything was online, every, in, which, in fact, this, this changed a lot the way in which we, teach, we were teaching, the way in which the students were taught. I think it's currently very important that the students uh, now uh, come back again to attend lectures, to attend tutorials, to do this more face-to-face -face contact. And uh, because... You know, in my opinion, this is this is going to be some of the best years of your life, okay? And then you're going to have these opportunities to make this, to build this network, to meet all these people, to go and meet your, during your childhood. But like some of this network will be useful also in the future. So I would say like try to make the most of these years because they never come back. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time and your insight, Dr. Kedera Sanchez. Uh, remember to come back next time for our next interview with another exciting economist. Thank you very much. <laughs>